Welcome to the Southeast Tennessee Sports Show presented by Check into Cash and Hardee's. I'm your host, Ryan Lovelace. Today, we have a fun episode. We start off with our Hardee's scoreboard update, like always. Then we're going to Silverdale Baptist Academy to visit with our male performer of the week, Brett Rogers. From there, we head over to Bradley Central to visit with our female performer of the week, Ashley Crittenden. And then we head to Polk County and McMinn Central to talk about their upcoming football game. But first, jumping right into it, the Hardy scoreboard update, an exciting week of high school sports this week. Starting off with Baylor, they come out with a big win. Or sorry, they take a loss to Knox Catholic. They lose by 10. Knox Catholic, very good this year. Meanwhile, on the other side of the private schools in Chattanooga, Macaulay, they keep rolling. A three-point win over NBA, a lot closer than most of their games have been this year. But the Blue Tornadoes come out with a win. Moving on, East Hamilton. We talked about Juan Ballard last year. They dominate East Ridge. They win by nearly 50 points. And then we mentioned Brett Rogers, Silverdale. Huge upset over CCS and the Seahawks of Silverdale. They are rolling this year. More on that in a second. Ray County, a tough region game. McMinn goes to Ray County. Ray County handles their business. They win by 14, a close game all the way around. Meanwhile, another region game, Meigs County gets a COVID win after Bledsoe County had to cancel the game. We hate that for Bledsoe County, but Meigs County gets the win there. McMinn Central, another tough loss for the Chargers. Second straight game they've lost by two points. They go up to Signal Mountain and lose by two in another heartbreaking game. We're going to talk with some of their guys later on in the show. Meanwhile, Udawa travels to Walker Valley. Walker Valley coming out, coming off a big loss versus Bradley. They come back firing. They win 48-7. Big win for Drew Aikens and the Walker Valley Mustangs after a tough loss. Meanwhile, on the other side of the county, the game of the week, Bradley versus Cleveland. Bradley's defense comes up big. Two pick sixes to give them the win. They win 28-14. Meanwhile, switching to girls' soccer, Walker Valley beats Ottawa 2-1. That was our only soccer action this week. Meanwhile, in volleyball, Bradley sweeps Walker Valley 3-0. Cleveland goes to Ray County and sweeps Ray County 2-0. Continuing on with volleyball, Cleveland also goes to Maryville. They take a tough loss 2-1. And then Cleveland, again, they play Ray County. And again, the same result, they come out with a 2-0 win. And then lastly, Bradley and McMinn County last night. Bradley takes care of business. They sweep. Meanwhile, Cleveland Walker Valley last night. Cleveland also takes care of business, and they sweep. More on Bradley volleyball later. That's all for the Hardy scoreboard update. Coming up next, you saw, C you saw Silverdale with a huge upset win. We're going to talk to the star of that game, Brett Rogers, over at Silverdale Baptist Academy. Ryan Lovelace here at Silverdale Baptist Academy, joined by our male performer of the week, junior quarterback, Brett Rogers. Brett, you guys are off to a hot start this season. So really, what has been the biggest difference between this season and last year where you weren't as successful? Well, I'd say our connection this year is just unbeatable. I mean, we went and had an experience at, uh, everyone calls it the, the mountain. And if you hear us talk about it, I mean, everybody was just so bonded by that experience. And... I mean, I think that's what's pushed us through and the difference between this year and last year. So last week against CCS, you had 553 yards of total offense, 278 through the air, 199 on the ground, and then 76 receiving just because you felt like it. So what was your key to a huge performance last week? I mean, the O-line, they did great. I mean, if you know CCS, they got some studs on that D-line. They were holding them up. Connor beat them down all night, and then... They were playing man across the board, which and our receivers one-on-one -on -one just made plays against them, and I got them the ball, and they made plays. So we're, we're a little into this season, but still early. So what are your goals individually, but also this team's goals? I'd say, I mean, individually, I just, I mean, just want to win. I don't care what happens. I think the team is the same way. I mean, we really don't look at individual stats. We just, we just want to win. I mean, that's it. So how long have you been playing football, and how did you get into football? Well, I mean, it was one of those things where ever since I was little, I had I had a helmet on and was playing football. I mean, all, my older brother played, and so my dad played. Um, so I wear number 14. So, I mean, that's the reason I play. So, obviously a stud on the football field, but last year as a sophomore on the baseball field, 
All-State, hit 626 with 28 stolen bases. Do you think baseball, some of the skills from baseball have helped on the football field? Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, if you, if you look at any other pro athlete, I mean, they usually play multiple sports in high school. I mean, there's, there's definitely a translation there. So, switching back to football, what NFL player do you try and model your game after? Um, I know Coach isn't going to like this answer, but I like Johnny Manziel. <laughs> <laughs> All right, lastly, what is your favorite pregame meal and why? Well, every week we just have the same thing. We got chicken, green beans, mashed potatoes, bread, and some water. Man, that's it. Every week. It's good. Hey, right, well, it's been working. Yes, sir. This has been Brett Rogers here at Silverdale Baptist Academy on the Southeast Tennessee Sports Show. We're going to take a quick look at some of his highlights, and we're going to send it back to Bradley Central to speak with our Female Performer of the Week. Ryan Lovelace here at Bradley Central High School, joined by our female performer of the week, Ashlyn Crittenden. Ashlyn, you're a senior volleyball player here. You guys just had a big tournament this weekend, beating six teams. But this year, you guys are 20 and three. Great year for you guys. What has been the team's secret to success this year? Um, I'd say this year, I think our difference is communication and just having a good bond, all of us outside sports. Um, we enjoy playing for each other, with each other. So just our bond has been very good. So I mentioned the tournament you guys won, a big tournament for you, 53 digs, 50 assists, 34 kills, and seven aces. What was the key to you going out and having just a great weekend last weekend? Um, honestly, me and my coach, we had a good conversation about what my role is, um, how I need to step up, and like my defense. Um, I had been struggling a little bit, but uh, I came into the tournament knowing what I had to do. I was in the right position. Um, really just knowing my role and not, doing, not trying to do too much, just being in my spot. So over 20 games into this season, what are your individual goals, but also what are this team's goals for this year? Um, well, at the beginning of the season, me and Coach had talked about my stats, where I was, um, how I was really close to the 1,000-point club with assists. Um, so that was one personal goal, which I think I've already reached. And digs, I was really close in. Um, as a team, last year we, for the first time in a while, made it outside of district. We got to the region. Um, we got put out first round, but I think our main goal right now is trying to get further into the tournament. So how long have you been playing volleyball, and how did you get started? Um, my sister, my oldest sister, she's 23 now. Uh, she started playing in sixth grade. She played at Ocoee and then at Walker and one year at Tennessee Wesleyan. Um, so I started playing whenever she introduced me to it. I played, uh, I started club in fourth grade um, along with all the other seniors. We played for a group called uh, Tennessee Blaze. Um, that's how I started in fourth grade. So you're also a pretty good member of the basketball team here. How did you get into basketball and how long have you been playing? I started in second grade at Charleston Elementary School. Um, it's funny, I didn't know that I was going to play. Uh, I didn't know that tryouts were that day, but I tried out in jeans and a sweatshirt. And next thing you know, I'm starting point guard. But uh, my brother kind of played a little bit, so that's I just played like in the in the yard with him. But yeah. So who is your role model and why? Um, I'm gonna be sappy. Uh, my brother has always been my role model. Um, like since I was growing up, I was always following in his footsteps. I wanted to be just like him. I was right behind him, you know, trying to dress like him, do whatever he did, 
just because he was a good example of like a good person, a godly man. Um, just he's always putting other people before him. So. So last question, a little more fun. What is your favorite pregame meal and why? Uh, I'd have to say French fries. I don't know why, but French fries is just. It's just what we always eat, even as a team, or Old Fort. All right. This has been our Female Performer of the Week, Ashlyn Crittenden, on the Southeast Tennessee Sports Show, presented by Check to Cash and Hardy's. We're going to watch some of our highlights and then take a quick break before we talk about our Game of the Week. Did you wake up craving a made-from-scratch biscuit topped with tender prime rib and a fried egg? How about now? The new prime rib and fried egg biscuit at Hardee's. Feed your happy. You're watching the Southeast Tennessee Sports Show, presented by Check Into Cash and Hardee's. Now back to your host, Ryan Lovelace. Ryan Lovelace here at Polk County High School, home of the Wildcats, joined by head football coach Rusty Brewer. Coach past two seasons, I mean, frankly, 0-10, I mean, 0-20 the past two seasons, but this year you came out, won your first game, and then you won your second game, and you're playing McMinn Central, looking to make it 3-0, and but how has this team just turned around from the past two years? Well, you know, as you said, you know, we, we struggled, we struggled, we had a lot of injuries, uh, and we, we had to play a lot of young kids, and and now that it's starting to pay off, you know, those kids that have had to play the last two years and, and kind of been through the hard times and struggles uh, now are a little more experienced. And, you know, we're taking care of opportunities. You know, the last couple of years we've had opportunities where we didn't make plays or we didn't make things happen. And this group's been able to do that. And luckily because of that, we've had a good start. So you mentioned some of your guys playing. This senior class, they played through a six-win season in 2018, but also you have a lot of underclassmen, sophomores stepping up. How great has the senior leadership been, but also the younger guys stepping up and filling roles? Oh, it's been amazing. You know, we talked about, you know, those guys have stuck through it. You know, those guys could have hung it up. They could have said, man, we don't want to be a part of this. Uh, but, but they've battled through it, and they persevered and, and understood that, that all the hard work eventually pays off, and, and we've seen that. And then on the young side of it, you know, because of – like I said, because of those guys getting to play, some of the sophomores that are playing now played as freshmen. The juniors played as sophomores. You know, so they're, they've been able to get that experience, uh, even even in the tough times. And I think it, it really has paid off this season so far. So, how electric was it week one to come out with the first win this school's seen since 2018? Oh, it was amazing. I mean, it was just a great night. It was great for these kids. You know, because they've. They, they, they come to work that week with a different mindset. You know, you could just feel it. You know, the bus ride up, man, it was silent. Um, you know, the week of prep was great. Uh, and and they, they knew that that opportunity to, just to get it started. And we told them, so, man, it's amazing what one win will do. You know, you win one, man, you like that feeling, you're going to keep doing what it takes to continue to win. So what are the goals for this team for the rest of the year? Well, we just got to, number one, keep doing what we're doing. You know, take care of opportunities, be there at the end of the ball game. Um, what we've done so far, we've not turned the football over on offense, and we've done a really good job on defense of eliminating some big plays and, uh, you know, and just, and just keeping people out of the end zone, which, which gives us the opportunity. So big game coming up versus McMinn Central before you dive into your regional schedule. How have you guys been preparing not only for this McMinn Central game but for the tough regional schedule you guys have? Well, you got to take it one week at a time. You know, we can't we can't go ahead and start looking. You know, we know Tyner's ahead. We know the Telecos, the Megs, those kind of teams are ahead. But, but you got to go week to week in this. You know, in our schedule, uh, and we feel like you know winning these games early builds that confidence going into the region the region schedule, which is very tough. You know, we got one of the toughest regions uh, in the state of Tennessee in two A. But you know, we've got to prepare ourselves week to week to win games and build confidence and be ready for that region schedule. So lastly, what players have just really stepped up this year? Well, we've had a lot of kids step up and make plays. Uh, offensively, uh, Damian McWilliams is one, a sophomore. He, he's been able to – he's found the end zone both weeks. Ryan Cronin has been – both weeks he's rushed for over 100 yards. He's scored four touchdowns. Um, uh, and up front, you know, we've got some guys, Bo Frank, a senior, uh, who plays offensive guard. Derek Burgess plays offensive guard. They also both play defensive tackle. They've made big stops. Uh, so, you know, like I said, we just got a bunch of kids that contribute. You know, Colby Maynard is our kicker, special teams kicker. He is 12 for 12 kicking uh, kickoffs for touchbacks. You know, so he helps us out with the field position game uh, on defense, just starting out that way. 
This has been head coach Rusty Brewer of Polk County High School. Now we're going to talk to some of his athletes about this upcoming game. Ryan Lovelace here at Polk County High School, home of the Wildcats, joined by Butch Bates, Isaiah Watson, Tanner Goodman, and Damian McWilliams. Isaiah, the past two seasons you guys didn't win a single game, but this year you guys have come out undefeated start to the season, looking to make a 3-0 start versus McMinn Central. How has this, how has this team turned it around since last year? Uh, I think we're just tired of losing, and we're, we're doing really good, and we have a good offense and defense. I think we're making Coach Burr proud, you know, getting them ready for this season. And I think we're doing this for Coach Burr. We have a good, better attitude and a better better players for this year in defense and offense. So, Birch, your defense has allowed 19 points in two games. How good has this defense been, and how good could this defense be this year? We could be a lot better, but like I feel like we're focusing more on aggressiveness, just getting down in the holes, blocking them up, and making our tackles. So, switching gears, Tanner, offensively, the past couple years you guys have been running the wing tee. A little offensive change this year. How smooth was the transition from the wing tee to your current offense? It went pretty smooth. We made some personnel changes, and it got better with more practice. And, yeah, we're doing pretty good, too, in so far. So, Damian, a big game coming up versus McMinn Central. How have you guys as a team been preparing for this game? Well, we've had a good bit of practice going since we didn't get to play last week. Um, we've had a lot of uh, prep for film and stuff, and hopefully we're drinking enough water so we don't cramp like the last two games. But that's pretty much all. So we're going to go down the line and go everybody. So what are your individual goals this year? I just want to make more tackles than a kicker this year. Uh, I would like, for me, probably get more wins. We need to get, uh, I'd love to go undefeated. That'd be... less, turn, less turnovers on the offensive side. Uh, probably putting more points on the board. So who is your role model and why, or which NFL player do you model your game after? My dad, because he never gives up. He always focuses on his job, and he always does it every day. Uh, I like uh, Xavier Howard. He's from the Miami Dolphins. I really like him a lot. Uh, he inspired me a lot to play more defense. I like more defense, but yeah, he did. Dad, he's always pushing me, making me do my best, and he's always there for me. Uh, favorite NFL player is probably Julio Jones. I, I just like aspire to be him. He's probably one of my favorite receivers, and I just love what he does. So lastly, this is sort of our fun question this week. What is your favorite pregame meal and why? Grapes. Because <laughs> <'Cause laughs> uh, they taste real good. I just eat them all the time. Uh, I like to go Sonic before games. Sonic with everybody else. Probably salad or Sonic. <laughs> All right, you heard, it here, you heard it here first. The Wildcats love some Sonic. This has been Ryan Lovelace joined by four Wildcats here at Polk County High School. They will host McMinn Central here tonight. Now we're going to take a break, and we're going to go right over to McMinn Central to speak with them about the game. I'm Ryan Lovelace here at McMinn Central High School, joined by... Novice Cox. Darius Cord. Hunter Cook. And Bay Harbison. So, Novice, the past two weeks, two tough losses by a combined four points. How have you guys battled adversity, and how are you guys going to come out stronger than last week? Uh, we've just come ready to work every day to practice and just looking to get better every day. So, Darius, this offense, they've gotten better each game as the season's gone along. How good can this offense be this year? It can be real good. We just work hard every day. Just got athletes make plays. So the past two games, the defense has allowed less than 20 points each game. How good has this defense been, and how good can the defense be? They can be, like, crazy good. Like, we can be as good as, like, any team out there. They just got to keep working hard and, you know, do what we do best. So, Bay, a tough game coming up at Polk County. How have you guys been preparing for this game? Uh, we've been focusing on, on the run game and the pass game, but we're just trying to outwork the team and uh, come out and be the better team. So, Novice, what are the team goals this year? I know we're a little bit into the season, but what are the goals for this team? Uh, we're looking to have a winning season and uh, make it to the playoffs. We haven't made it in a few years. So we're going to start down the line. What are your individual goals this year? Uh, just help lead this team to the playoffs mainly. A uh, thousand-yard club. thousand-yard club, probably. Compete and win every game we can. 
So how long have you guys played football, and how did you get into football? Uh, I've played for seven years, and I mainly got into it just my dad, probably. I played for seven years in my family, the football family. I played for 11 years, and my dad got me into football. Uh, this is my second year, and I was stuck me into it. <laughs> <laughs> so what NFL player do you think you play like and why? Uh, probably Lamar Jackson because I can throw it, and then whenever I need to run, I can run it too. Julio Jones, it's just his route running, and he can go get the ball. Uh, probably Christian McCaffrey, cause I'm power back. I can do, I can do, I can truck anybody, or and I can juke. So I mean, and he can do both. Uh, probably Julio Jones too, just cause I'm quick and I like to catch the ball. So last question, this one a little more fun. What is your favorite pregame meal and why? Uh, I guess some chicken tenders. Get some protein for the game. <laughs> a little Subway milk. Uh, probably hamburger steak. Chicken and probably mashed potatoes. <laughs> this has been Ryan Lovelace here at McMinn Central High School, joined by four Chargers. These guys will play at Polk County tonight at 7.30. With that being said, we're going to head back to the station. We are definitely excited about this McMinn Central versus Polk County game. But meanwhile, in Bradley County, Mix 1041 is your Southeast Tennessee football headquarters. You can listen to Cleveland on Mix 1041. You can listen to Bradley on 1013 The Buzz. And you can listen to Walker Valley on 991. And then after all those games are over, you can listen to Greg Phillips wrap up all those games and all the other scores from the area on the Hardy's Friday Night Blitz. But as for me, this has been the Southeast Tennessee Sports Show presented by Check Into Cash and Hardee's. We will see you next week.